Hello, fellow Galactic Civilization 3 enthusiasts, uh, to this new series, this Let's Learn series. My name's Kieran with Explorminate, uh, and, and this isn't a Let's Play. This is going to be kind of some tutorial videos for uh, from me for you guys. I'm going to try to keep them pretty brief, uh, explaining some different key uh, kind of like aspects within the game. I In exploring the forums and what not through development I see a lot of how do I play this game it looks great but I, ha I have these questions and while there is a pretty useful tutorial which I recommend you looking at uh, within the game if you're like me I don't like reading a lot of text <laughs> uh, so maybe this would be a little bit uh, a different approach for you to learn some things uh, and hopefully I'll cover some things not necessarily explicitly covered in the tutorial so uh, this first video we're gonna cover the economy now the economy in this game uh, virtually uh, occurs just on the home worlds. Uh, their star bases do provide buffs and access to resources such as this and others, uh, but we're going to focus on the worlds because those are the primary, um, uh, the backbone of your your empire. So first off, uh, if you look as I mouse over, uh, it gives a class of the planets. This is a class 11 lush, class 11 lush, class 5 barely habitable. So the higher the class, the better the planet. The lower the class, the, the less useful the planet. Uh, and that's mostly uh, that the number, the higher the number, the more hexes there are to build things, such as factories or research laboratories. If we look here, this is our home world. It's a class 11 a planet, if you remember. We've got this going right here. So we've got, I don't know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tiles. So that's 10 spots to build factories or whatever it is. And we'll get that into that in a moment. Um, this is 11, I believe. It has one more than the other. But it's class 11, so it's comparable. Notice how the layout's a little different. And then our class 4 world, you pretty much just got two. Uh, I got three, excuse me. So when you're deciding which planets to colonize, that should be uh, an indicator typically a higher class world is going to have more bonuses. Um, and then also something to look for, none of these planets actually represent it, um, but sometimes they'll have traits to them, like maybe an active core or something. And below that it will say like plus 25% to manufacturing, or uh, sometimes they have a, a negative effect uh, along with that, so it could be minus 25% uh, food production or manufacturing or whatnot. So these planets, again, don't uh, exhibit any uh, inherent traits, but keep those in mind. That might play a role in how you decide to specialize a planet. Um, yeah, so let's just jump right in here. So one thing, uh, there is a difference between production and manufacturing. I don't really want to get in deep with these videos. Uh, manufacturing is basically how fast you're, the more manufacturing you have, the quicker you can build buildings or ships. Production uh, is a number that refers to a combination of, uh, well, there are product buildings that add production, such as your civilization capital, adds five. You see there, uh, Durantium refinery adds one. Um, those can add production, but it's also a factor of your population. So think, the more population, the more production. And so that's a base number, and then you add the multipliers from these buildings. So uh, eight population offers, we'll say eight, eight production by default. It's a little bit more, um, but think of it that way. Uh, and then if you have 100% bonus from your factories, that 8 turns into 16, and that's why this would reflect, say, 16 manufacturing. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Remember, production is population, plus a few other things you'll run across, um, and then you uh, add in the multipliers from your buildings. So let's look at some of these buildings. We're, we're talking about the multipliers, right? So here is a basic factory. This is just your tier 1 factory. They get uh, more effective at a higher bonus as you research new types of factories. Um, but right now at base it adds it's 25%. And then if you look a little bit lower, right down here, uh, it's a level 1, so it's a 5% um, bonus. So this factory is providing the 30% boost to that production level. Um, and so you, you can quickly see, while population is important, um, fa you kind of have to draw the line, right? Because if you just have just people, you're missing out on, um, uh, I guess, your ability to produce money, research, or manufacturing. 
Uh, because three factories pretty easily. If we look, uh, I'm like about 100%. So I'm doubling my production value. So you're going to have to balance farms and factories or farms and laboratories and whatnot. Now, uh, one thing I love about Galsiv 3 is that you're not just building a factory or a barracks or a research lab. Where you place things in regards to these hexes matter. Um, that's called the adjacency bonus. So if you look at this, the same factory, um, I talked about those two numbers, but if you look at the very bottom, it says bonus to adjacent improvements means plus one level to manufacturing. So what that means is I get uh, it's a higher level, so it's a more effective factory if I put it next to another factory. So this is level one, this is level one, this is level two because he's next to uh, other guys. So if you notice, he has that same 25% base manufacturing addition, uh, but he's 10% uh, boost on top of that. So he's adding 35% as opposed to these just have five, so they're 30%. Um, and that 5% might seem silly, but it really starts stacking once you uh, put other buildings that just offer adjacency bonuses, like say you add uh, five levels, that would be a 25% boost in manufacturing. So essentially the factory would be doubled its efficiency. Um, if we look at the research labs here, this is a level two, this is a level two, this is level four. So it has a 20% research uh, bonus on top of the 25. So because this is right next to two adjacent research laboratories, it's essentially uh, twice as effective almost, right? Um, 20 percent instead of just five so you're hitting 45 percent instead of just 30 so uh, where you place things matters is what I'm getting at and that's really fun so this planet you can see I could cluster things here this planet over here is it more snakes so I'd have to um, decide what to put there um, be a little less effective and uh, maybe getting really high adjacency bonuses the optimal situation is something like if this hex was complete, you surround it and pop something like a um, a factory, not just a factory, sorry, like a solar power plant, something you can get later on, which provides huge adjacency bonuses, and then all your factories would be like level four or five. Um, so then instead of like having uh, six factories, it'd be like you have 12, if that makes sense. Uh, so adjacency matters. That's the, the take home message. Also, uh, as you notice, there's these little symbols at the bottom of these hexes, right? The rest of them don't. So if I click on the rare earth minerals, you see I'm adding plus two to research. So that's actually where most of this level four comes from. Uh, because you can only provide an adjacency bonus, I believe, to the building right next, to one building next to it. So he's basically helping him, he's helping him, he's helping him, right? So they'd all be level two, but this is level four because this tile has rare earth metals. So it adds plus two to research, or if I put the factory there, it adds plus two to manufacturing. But in this this case, I've chose to put a research there. Um, this one provides a boost to wealth, but I decided to go for... Uh, clustering my research laboratories as opposed to a building that would provide an economic boost. So uh, just because it gives a bonus doesn't always mean you're going to want to build that improvement there, right? Because if these are all research laboratories, there's no reason to have just like a lone uh, market there producing uh, additional income. So uh, that's the basics of how your economy works. Now, besides just uh, building more factories, there's this wonderful screen here, the Govern Planet tab down here. It pulls this up. So watch these numbers down here. If I want to focus all of my population on producing, um, uh, on manufacturing, I'm at 37.5 a turn, when before I was 12.4. So uh, essentially here it's split three ways. So if I focus everybody, it makes sense it triples it, right? Same with uh, research. So uh, my home planet's... Uh, this is just me. Uh, I usually like to focus on manufacturing and research because you got to get research to, you know, get new tech, but then you also want to be uh, producing a lot with your, your capital world because it starts off with a pretty significant advantage and probably for a while it will be your most important world and maybe even late into the game. Uh, so besides just controlling where you slide this, and you, you can see 
If I want to go half money and half manufacturing with a little bit of research, I, I can do that. Uh, I typically specialize my worlds in one or two ways. Uh, you, you always need some factories in order to build your research labs and upgrade those, right? Um, but some worlds might be completely factories, uh, depending on the bonuses they have. Uh, others might not. Now, uh, in addition, oh, I guess this world's fine. My home world here has a shipyard that it's assisting. So it's uh, sending part of its manufacturing every turn to the shipyard to construct ships. Uh, so if we look at the Govern Planet, the Govern Planet tab, right now I have 56% social, 44% military. So if I were to slide this all the way to social, you notice these numbers will go down. Boom. So if I devote all my manufacturing capabilities to building improvements on the planet, they're going to be built faster. But now, my constructor takes longer. I actually think that constructor might not ever build. Uh, but if I were to slide it all the way to toward military, which essentially just means shipbuilding, even if you're building non-military ships, just military means shipbuilding. Uh, now it's NA, meaning I will never be able to build or finish any improvement on the planet because I have zero of all my manufacturing allocated here. But instead of eight, it went down to three turns for my constructor. So uh, if you need to pump ships out, slide it this way. If you need to uh, you know, upgrade your factories or um, build something on the planet, you want to slide it this way. Or you can keep it 50-50, whatever you want to do. So that's part of the beauty of the game. It's not just I have X number of people and three factories that doubles their overall um, benefit to manufacturing. It's, well, where am I going to put the slider and, and whatnot? So that helps to specialize worlds in addition to what buildings you place. Because if I don't want to build, if I don't want to produce any uh, income from this world, just get all the way down there or, or there or something. Uh, now I'm losing a little bit of money from this planet to turn, but I'm really effective at research and manufacturing at this point. Uh, so those those are just some things to keep in mind, and each planet is probably going to be a little bit different. Uh, as I said, I like to typically specialize planets rather than keeping this slider in the middle. You can do a little bit of everything there, or you can be really effective. Um, if we look here, 15 science a turn down to 21. If we come over here, I mean 15 turns to 44, so again, three times that. So that's just a decision you'll, you'll need to make. Um... So that is essentially how your economy operates. Those are the decisions you are required to make <laughs> as a player in order to make your economy uh, more or less effective. And then one last thing. I'm not going to explain all these numbers in this video, uh, but I will talk about population and food. So food represents the... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I throw it right in there. The, uh, the food... This is the food cap. This is your population cap. So I can't have more than 10 people... Uh, each one is a billion, so I can't have more than 10 billion people on this planet. Now, this number can be improved by building fa uh, farms, which I don't have that tech for li yet, um, but I think the base farm provides two extra food or something like that. So if I build that right there, this would be 12. Uh, now, with almost everybody, they, they have growth that just happens automatically every turn. You're a different. I um, won't we'll really get into that. They, you have to build your population. Uh, but as you see, the growth is 0.1 a turn. Which essentially means the next turn I'll have 8 population. 11 turns from now, I will have 9 population. 21 turns from now, I will have 10. So I'll be at my cap. So there are buildings you can build to increase this growth rate. Because, you know, point one a turn is pretty slow. Uh, especially when population is a main uh, driving force in determining uh, your, your how, how much you produce of any of these three uh, items. So, you know, if I was close to cap, if this was 9.9, .9, I'd want to have a farm almost already done so I could get that population higher. Um, but that's what those two numbers mean. So build farms to increase the amount of people on the planet uh, and build other uh, improvements to improve the growth rate or just, you know, let it let it go. Um, I mean, point one a turn, it's okay. It's, these games can take a long time. You don't need a bunch of population real quick. Uh, I have found, though, if you do... Uh, focus more on social and you bring well I think it's mostly just the social it's not enough at this point uh, but if you, f you focus on social it's going to improve the growth rate so I've I've seen planets where I'm getting 0.6 even above 
1.0 uh, a turn. Uh, and then if you're focused on manufacturing, your growth rate will go down. So keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, that's I'm just going to leave it there. That is the basics to run your empire. There are other things I'll let you look at um, yeah, and whatnot. But if you understand that, you'll understand how to build things, how to research, and how to make money, which is just the backbone of any 4X game. But that's how it works here in, in Galsif 3. So thanks for watching. If you have questions, if something wasn't clear, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. Uh, but I hope you enjoy these, these videos, that they're instructive. And I will uh, catch you next time. Thank you.